Hi everyone, Tochi here today with a class on colors. Colors, colors. Yes, how can we use colors? That's what we're going to talk about in this class. How can you use colors in a spiritual way to achieve certain results that you want? I have a whole pile of clothes here with different colors and I'm sure you're going to find this class interesting. So go get your snack, go get your drink, go get your notebook and your pen and take notes because I am sure that you will learn things that you did not know about and be reminded of some of the things you need to know. So let's take it away. Come to my family. of housekeeping thank you for being a subscriber if you are one if you're not I do encourage you to click the subscribe button click all the all notifications so that you'll know when I put out good material like this and also when I come on on the lives we really have fun during our lives I also thank those of you who are paid members of my channel I couldn't do this without you if you'd like to be a, a paid member please read the description box below this video it has all details as to the perks and benefits you get from being a member of the dr toji channel if it's available in your area you will see a join button below this video if it's not there it only means it's not yet available in your country or your region but you have other memberships that you could look at if you read the description box below this video also, if you'd like to consult with me, uh, you'd like to get a reading done, you'd like to buy my products or services, also click on the link in the description below my video. You'll see the link to my website where you can reach me on a variety of platforms. So let's get into today's class. Before we go into the colors proper, here's a little bit of background on colors. When we see colors, we need to understand what we're seeing. When we look at the color red, for instance, it means that this object is absorbing every color but red. We could say in a, uh, in a way that this object has rejected or is putting out the color red. So all other colors like when light hits this you know that light contains all colors so when light hits this object all the other colors in the spectrum are absorbed absorbed into this um, into this blouse here but the only color that is not absorbed that does not um, that is quote unquote rejected is the red color and so because the red color is the one that's not absorbed that is rejected that's the one we see so look at it this way it's just like if you're soaking up something with a sponge okay you know that if you sometimes you can sop up some water with it your soup uh, oil some things but there are certain things that cannot be absorbed by a sponge and that thing that is left behind that doesn't get absorbed by that sponge that is what you see that is what is left that is what we see when we see colors why is it important for us to know this it is important for us to know this because the color that does not get absorbed the color that is rejected the color that is put out is the color we see and the color that affects us so the color affects the seer the person who sees the color why is this important uh, sometimes you'll see in some religious traditions or spiritual practices someone will say to you oh everybody has to wear white because white is the color of holiness and that's the only color that God wants or that's the only color that the Orisha wants for instance if you're an Efa you know they will tell you that white is the color of a okay 
in reality, in reality, that color is for you, the devotee. The color is for you, the beholder, the seer, the person who sees that color. That color is meant to affect you, to influence you. When you see the color, it evokes a certain response, a certain vibrational response within you. And then based on that vibrational response that is evoked within you, something happens to you. You get it? So sometimes it's interesting to see people who say, well, if you're going to do this ritual, you have to use a white candle, a red candle, a purple candle, a yellow candle, because that's what the spirits want. Now, now, no, 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 no. That is the color that needs to influence you so that you will be at a certain spiritual vibrational frequency in order to connect with that spirit. The color is for you. I know that this uh, viewpoint, uh, this information will run counter to what a lot of people practice and teach and preach and put out there, and but that's okay. Remember in this channel, we deal with data we deal with the real information we deal with how things work we just don't go by what everybody is saying we don't go by what someone else said but we go by how things work that is why we're into practical spirituality here so always remember if there is a certain effect you are trying to achieve, a certain perspective that you are trying to achieve, if there's something you want to see, choose a color that influences you. You can also choose a color that influences another person in a human body. Because remember again, these colors they react with the cones and rods in our retina. So we are the ones who perceive the colors. The signals go to our brain, to the optical center, through our optical nerve, goes into the optical centers of our brain and get interpreted. We are the ones who interpret the colors we see, not the spirits. We are the ones who need to be put in a certain state in order to be in resonance with the spirit, spirit, entity, whatever it is that we're working with. So I hope um, that makes sense to you. So let's get started. So the first color we're going to look at here is red, okay? Red is great for manifestation. Red is great for energy. If you want to feel energetic, if you want the person who sees you to feel your energy, to feel your impact, you want to be wearing red. You want to be using red. When you are um, at your altar, for instance, and you want to put some energy into what you're doing on your altar, you want to use red candles. Because again, as you look at the red or as someone else looks at the red, the sympathetic response to that is energy, is vitality, is action, it's manifestation. That is why sometimes there are some movies you watch and you will see that the spiritual practitioner is wearing red. Okay. You will also find that, that a lot of royal people, when they're out to do certain work in the public, they will wear red. That is why the seductress wears red lipstick, red nail polish, and so on and so forth. Red underwear. Red underwear? We'll leave that alone. Next color we're going to look at is orange. Orange is kind of similar to red in that it's an energetic color. But it's an energetic color that is infused with life. So if you are looking, uh, for instance, to provoke a response that has to do with fertility, with life, with the energy, 
of coming together, not so intense as red, you want to start looking at the color orange. The same thing would apply to candles and other spiritual tools that you use at your altar. Orange is if you, you can use orange when you want that energy to be present in that interaction or that work or that ritual, you know, but you don't want it to be too intense. You just want that energy to be there, but not too intense. Okay. So the next color we have here is a yellow. Okay. So I know this kind of looks kind of mustardy, but yellow. Yellow is also a good color for manifestation, for power, for energy. It is also a mood modulator. When you put on yellow or you see yellow, it infuses you with an energy, but it also infuses you with a life. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, when we use yellow in uh, practice, it also brings about the sense of the life force. So we think of the sun, the thing that makes things to grow, to expand. That's what yellow is for. Yellow is also good for communication. Because remember again, in our spiritual practice, we use the sun or we can use the sun to communicate. So in your spiritual practice, on your altar, you can use yellow candles, yellow tools to help facilitate communication. Especially if you're trying to um, have some communication with your spirit guides, um, at your guardian spirit, your creator. Yellow is a good color, okay? Yellow um, is also a good color for blessing, for blessing, benediction, okay? Next color we have here is green. Green, okay, let me get that off from under me. So green, I know this kind of looks bluish in the light, but trust me, it's a green color, even though it looks like blue um, on the screen, okay? So green is uh, the color of life, the color of chlorophyll. When we see green, we think of food, of nurture, growth, nourishment, okay? Green is a good color to wear, for instance, if you wish to create a nurturing bond, okay? It is also a color that is easy on the eyes. It is calming to the soul. It is similar to blue. We're going to talk about blue next, but green is also very calming. You know, if you paint your walls with certain shades of green, you will find out it's very calming. When you look out into foliage, when you look out into nature and you see the green, you see how calming it can be. And that is in contradistinction to say the yellows and the oranges and the reds of deserts. You can feel the heat. You can feel the dryness of it. You can feel the fire in it. But with green, you're talking about calmness. You're talking about healing. You're talking about life force. When we use green candles on our altars, in our spiritual work, we are inviting a life force. Now, of course, because the US dollar is in green, a lot of people around the world associate green with money and prosperity. But then we need to understand the underpinning of that. Prosperity comes from having plenty. Prosperity comes from having food, nurture, something that is feeding, something that is giving life energy. Because remember again, money is energy and it is a feeding energy, especially when that energy is used well. Next color up is blue, okay? Blue is 
often used to depict water. It is calming. Blue is also uh, a color of spirituality. It is also a color of healing, forgiveness, inspiration. Okay, when we want to be inspired, when we want to be calmed, when we want to be comforted, we can choose certain shades of blue. Imagine how you feel when you look up into the sky, you look up and the sky is blue and you feel expansive. You feel that life force. That is what blue does. If you'd like to bring that into your interactions, you want to be wearing blue. If you also want to have that sense uh, on your altar when you're doing your spiritual work, you also want to use blue. Blue is also good for forgiveness work. If you're going to be doing forgiveness work, if there's some forgiveness that needs to be happening, blue is a great color for that. Next color we have here is in the purple indigo uh, range. When we talk about purple, I know the first thing that comes to mind for a lot of people is the color of royalty, okay? Purple and indigo are the colors of the crown chakra that remind us of infinite wisdom, infinite knowledge, the cosmic knowledge and uh, cosmic information. Purple, indigo are great for inspiration. They're also great for mystery. They're kind of, sim it's kind of similar to, um, I would say it's kind of similar to black in terms of inspiration. Uh, blue can also be um, inspirational as well. But when it comes to purple and indigo, we're thinking along the lines of intuition, the lines of wisdom, the wise woman, the wise man. Okay. So when we are um, working on our altar or using our spiritual accoutrements, okay, when we use things like purple candles or indigo candles, violet candles, we are looking for insp inspiration. We're calling upon intuition. There's certain kind of spiritual knowledge that we're looking for. Purple and indigo and violet can be majestic colors that appeal to the higher intelligences. So not just to the um, physical or carnal intelligences, but also to the higher intelligences. It's a great color to wear if you're trying to connect with someone on a very high intellectual level, okay? Um, purple can also represent um, authority. It can also represent forgiveness. It can also represent cleansing, cleansing, okay? And then you can use that also in your altar work and also with people. Now we come to the color white. Now, when we look at a white object, what that means is that every color that hits this object is reflected back. Nothing is retained. No colors rejected, no color, uh, all colors are rejected, sorry, and none is retained. Okay, so when the white hits it, the white goes back. So we see the white because nothing is retained. It releases everything that hits it. All the light that hits it gets released. That is why white is great for release. If, you're, um, if you want to release emotions, release thoughts, white is a great color. White is a great color for protection for that reason because it reflects everything back. Everything is reflected back. Nothing is absorbed. That is the reason why on hot days, uh, you know, people would advise you and say wear white. Why? Because white does not absorb heat easily. 
it also releases heat slowly as it absorbs slowly it releases slowly so because of that it's a great reflector we can use white when we want to reflect if we need to be a little bit private if we need to be a little bit hidden okay um, I do know that a lot of authorities uh, will attach purity to white but the underlying information or principle behind that is because purity, the, the concept of purity retains nothing. Purity means it doesn't contain anything. Purity means the thing does not contain anything else. So you see, so it's not it's not a moral thing because I know a lot of times people say, well, wear white as the holy people wear white and so on. No, what the, what this does, it, it retains nothing. This is the color of the initiate, the person who is a novice, the person who comes and says, I am empty of knowledge. Fill me with knowledge. Okay. Because there's nothing contained here. And as the person goes along, then they start attaining other colors. The same thing applies to when we want to use white on our altars, like our candles. I know that in a, a lot of authorities will say that if you're um, praying or you're on your altar, whatever, that white can substitute for a whole bunch of other colors uh, when, you're, when you're doing spiritual work. And that's true, because if you can find other specific colors you can use white but the danger with using white candles or white accoutrements is that the particular uh, frequency that comes with the color you're trying to work with might be difficult to achieve because with white you're reflecting everything back white is a good color for mourning you know if there is a death and you want a little bit of shielding White is a good color, and uh, there are many cultures and many traditional and religious paths that will say use white when there is a bereavement or mourning someone has died. Now, last but not the least is black. In uh, popular discourse, we hear that black is the color of evil, of negativity, and nothing is farther than the truth. Black is the most powerful color. Black absorbs quickly and releases quickly. That is why they will tell you on a hot day, don't wear black because you're going to get hot pretty quickly. Black is a great color for release. If there are some things you need to let go of, if there are things you need to break down, Black is a great color for that. Uh, black is a great color for creating empathy between you and another person because it will enable you to feel the person quickly. That is why you find in a lot of customer service retail situations, there is black. Even though people will say, well, black is, looks slimming, black makes everybody look the same. But remember, there is also a spiritual principle behind that. When you wear black, you're more likely to be empathetic with the person that you're dealing with. You're more likely to, it's easier for you to be on the same vibrational level uh, with the other person when you're wearing black. In our spiritual practice, we can use black candles to release, to break down uh, certain situations. Black is also great for conception. When we're working on new ideas, when we're sowing seeds, especially spiritual seeds, creative seeds, because remember, conception occurs in the dark. And the power of conception is very powerful. That's why one of the power centers of the body is in the genital, uh, 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 genital or the lower, you know, or neither regions. 
that's where we have a lot of power. And black can represent that kind of power, the power of reproduction. And that is why we wear black and we look sexy. We feel sexy because it pulls again. It creates that resonance from that primal source of energy. Okay. Black, um, I, I love black. Black um, is a fantastic color because it can be used positively and it can be used negatively. Black can be used for control because if you wear black or you use black and it puts you on that vibration where you can be empathetic to someone else, then if, you know, there's some manipulation that can occur as a, as a result of that. Black uh, sometimes has been called uh, the color of bondage because of this empathetic energy that is uh, created from wearing black. Black is also a great intensifier. If you need to intensify a situation, then wear black. Black is also a great color for uh, grounding. That's why you have your grounding crystals like obsidian, tur black tourmaline, uh, things like that. They're great for grounding, bringing us back to reality. So uh, I think those are the colors I have. Yeah, those are the colors that I have here. Understand that in this class, we have not gone through the complete spectrum of colors that are possible on planet Earth. But we've just looked here at the general uh, colors, uh, you know, categories of colors that we have. My suggestion is that when you're looking to influence or be influenced by a situation, use the right color, wear the right color. You know, when you have multicolors, like something that I have on here, then you have various energies that are at play. You can see how light and colorful and playful my outfit looks because again, there are several colors that are in there and they're all interplaying with each other and that's why it's, it's a playful color. You can experiment with these colors. Which ones can I put together to achieve certain effects or to create certain vibrations or even when you're working on your altar or doing your spiritual work, what kind of colors of candles can you put in there to start uh, creating certain ambiances or environments around your altar? Okay. Um, at a future date, we're going to do uh, another video on uh, colors uh, with some other deeper spiritual uh, correspondences or maybe you know what I'll save that for the master teacher class so you will have to be a master teacher uh, level member to access that video how about that that's my little teaser for you so as usual we end our class uh, with our invocation we're thankful to our creator our guardian spirit our guardian angels our, our ancestors our spirit guides and all those in the unseen realms who help us, who love us, who guide us, and who teach us this information about colors to enable us come into resonance and harmony with them. Ashe. Mm -hmm.